Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. Real Estate Coaching Radio is the nation's number one daily radio show for realtors who demand authentic real-time coaching. Get ready for fluff-free, unfiltered, full-strength honesty about what's truly working to get you into action, helping others, and making money now in today's real estate market. Now to our hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Three, two, one, and we're back, Julie. It is December the 11th. We're just yes. a couple weeks out of Christmas. I know. Happy Friday. You know what? I have to do some Christmas shopping for you. I have to do some Christmas shopping for pretty much everybody. The clock <laughs> is ticking. It's so hard to remember when it's you know 80 degrees every day. Not that I'm complaining because people are going to... Be like, yeah. what? You know, remember, we're from Ohio. We did our time in the Midwest. We That's understand right. cold. We understand rain, freezing rain, sleet, frozen snow, all of those variety of things. So our heart goes out to you if you're experiencing that. But yes, it is time to get the Christmas shop finished. Yes. So what do you want for Christmas? Gosh, I don't know. Probably don't... all things having to do with working out. You know, um, I want to have time with you and the kid at the beach looking at fish. My, mine's more... Peace and time. Than peace and time. All right. Well, yeah. that, that make some cookies and. You know. I don't know if I can promise you peace and time over the holiday, considering know, we have right? a seven-year-old and a you know a couple <laughs> French bulldogs. I'm more and... likely to get <laughs> chaos and no peace and, and pandemonium. But yeah. it is in the Caribbean, so we mm-hmm. can be grateful certainly for that. That's right. So we are working on helping all of you with your 2021 business plan. Now this is and we've been talking a lot about the importance of taking these podcasts seriously. We're going to be going over. The the meat and potatoes of the details of the um, treasure map, but none of this will mean anything to you. And the real estate treasure map is our fill in the blank business plan. None of this will mean a thing to you unless you've actually taken the time um, and you've completed your real estate treasure map, or even better, you're completing it at the same time that we're doing this podcast. And if you've not downloaded your pod, your podcast, if you've not downloaded your treasure map yet, uh, all you got to do is text 2021 to 855 685 1045. Just text 2021 to 855 685 1045, and you're going to be get receive a text back. Click that link in the text, and it'll take you right to um, the website where you can download not just the real estate treasure map, but Think and Grow Rich for real estate. Now that is a rendition of Think and Grow Rich uh, that was written by Napoleon Hill, and this is um, the uh, public domain version. So this is the original writing. And so what we did years ago is we took the original Think and Grow Rich, and we added real estate content to make it very personal. And what uh, Julie actually was genius in taking each of the subjects, each of the um, subjects which may seem sometimes a little obtuse and maybe written in a, a format that is a little hard to understand because it was written back in the 20s. Um, and she then essentially translated it for real estate people. So I think you guys will really enjoy it. real estate. You know, right. Yeah. But it's free, mm-hmm. and all you've got to do is text 2021 to 855 685 1045. And there's six other books there as well. Your 12 month lead generation plan. We're giving all these things to you as our way of saying thank you for a fantastic year. Thank you for the honor of being your coaches. Or if we're not your coaches yet, at least thank you for the honor of being your podcast hosts. And thank you for continuing to make this the number one listen to daily podcast for real estate agents, at least in the United States. We're working on um, increasing our global audience. We now are being listened to, I think, in 56 or 57 different countries, which is pretty outstanding. So please do go ahead and download your real estate treasure map. It is your fill-in-the-blank business and life plan. Just text 2021 to 855-685-1045. All right, Mrs. Harris. Yes, indeed. So getting back into your treasure map, which again is very personal to you, so don't skip any steps here. We're going to clean up the math a little bit today so that we can go forward with a little bit more, a little touch of mindset, how to actually process your goals, some thoughts that we know that you're having. So let's just make sure that you've got the math done. We went over personal overhead, business overhead, tax, dedication, and savings. Generally, if you're socking away 20% for taxes and at least 10% to savings, at least to start. And if that's too much, then make your savings 5% for now and then up it later. But you're going to come up with a number for that. Those are the things you have to pay for. And so, Julie, this is going to seem like we're jumping in the deep end too fast. And if you're listening to this podcast out of sequence, it's a reason Julie and I always announce the dates at the top of the shows. And you can, of course, find these in sequential order on our website, timandjulieharris.com, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify. We're syndicated everywhere now. Uh, But the importance... uh, 
is that you download and listen to the previous podcasts that we started on Monday. Today's Friday because it's going to walk you through step by step the importance of understanding this process. Um, and if you don't take any of this seriously, or if you skip a step, if you get frustrated, if you start and stop and start and stop, it's not going to have any impact on your life. But if you actually take the time and go through, especially the money, the numerical aspect of the real estate treasure map, it is life changing because you'll feel liberated from what you didn't realize was an omnipresent ses- a sense of financial stress that was surrounding you. And if you want me to prove to you mm-hmm. that you're experiencing an omni- sen- uh, omnipresent sense of stress, just the very topic of talking about money. How do you feel? I'm guessing most of you are feeling a little stressed. And that just goes to show that your subconscious mind is saying, hey, you, would we please pay attention to your finances? Hey, you, let's get the treasure map done so that once all the numbers are out in the open, then you'll be able to actually track and measure your, uh, your forward uh, progress and momentum. What we want for all of you more than anything is we want you to be able to look back this time of year at the end of 2021. <laughs> right, going into 2022, um, and assuming it's not as the same crazy year as it was this year, we, we want you to look back on the on you know the end of next year, looking back at this past year. We want you to have measurable, specific things that you're proud of. Do you have those things now? Are there specific things that you accomplished? Not you got better at, not just sort of I started, but actual things that you set as a goal, that you set as a plan, and that you started, you uh, you know followed through on your action plan, and you completed. That's what a goal is. A Very goal- specific. You're, you have a great segue. Right. So I'm giving it back to you. That's right. Okay. So first, you figured out how much you've got to earn just to basically survive and pay for what you have to. So we start with that because a lot of our listeners, a lot of our coaching members, you guys have already figured that out. If you've survived more than 18 months in real estate, you've probably got that figured out. But we also know that some of you guys listening are trying to uh, replace your existing job or add on to your existing job. So if you're looking to make a switch to real estate, this is the first thing that we work on in coaching is understanding What's real estate have to do for you, right? So if I'm earning X at my job job, probably there's a reason for that. And you've got to define what's real estate got to give back to you to make it make sense for you. So this is just like basic survival stuff. After you figured out that number, so don't skip that step. Make sure you're very clear on what that survival amount of money is. And we're defining it as monthly. Then you're going to work on your goals. Now, we have had uh, many dedicated podcasts to goals in five areas of life, but I wanted to insert just a little reminder of what they are and then show you how to do the math with this. So your mission is to have very specific. So goals have to be SMART, S-M-A-R-T, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. In other words, a goal is a dream with an action plan, a specific plan. So the five areas of life are family, physical, financial, spiritual, and educational. Again, family, physical, financial, spiritual, and educational. Now, I wanted to make sure, Tim, that we pointed out their goal here is not to have ultimate balance. That is not the goal. I know some of you guys are like, oh, I've got to find my balance. No, in fact, anything worth doing, having, being, or seeing takes being out of balance, almost on purpose. And there's so much that's been written on that. You know, they talk about you know, Michael Phelps being in the pool um, six hours a day. And, you know, obviously he's prioritizing swimming, but he also is the most decorated Olympic athlete in the history of the Olympics. So anything that you're going after, you're going to at least sometimes well, define be out of balance. It. Drill down more on what you just said. So there's, there's five categories of life that generally speaking, everyone will agree is the most definable way of setting, you know, meaningful, impactful goals in your life. Uh, there's spiritual. Julie and I don't like to mess around with words. So it's spiritual. There's family. There's educational. There's financial, and there's physical, right? right? And so what she is expressing, and just to really drill down for those of you, and I always, you always have to remember that we're picking up new listeners every day. I know that's why I'm kind of backtracking. I know. And filling in. And this is sometimes yeah. the first time they've heard this information, yeah. right? That's right. I, we're so used to preaching to the choir, I you know? know. But so the moral of the story is, is that to have balance in your life is impossible, and it's a maybe not even. Um, a pursuit that any of you should be considering because in the pursuit of having balance in your life, you actually burn yourself out. Now, can you have balance if you're only picking maybe two or three of those uh, five things to focus on? Probably. Now, if you if that's your definition of balance, no argument here. But if you think you're somehow miraculously going to divvy up your life into, you know, 20% goes to physical, right. 20% goes to financial, 20% goes to mental, you know, the educational rather family, it's not going to happen. And then in the process of trying to maintain that 20%, you know, balance, 
balance you'll equation. You'll get further out of balance. <laughs> you'll get further out of balance, and then you'll think something's wrong with you. Yep. And and so the reason that we really drill down on this being um, something that you need to be aware of is because it literally is impossible. Your brain is not designed to actually operate like that. Your brain is designed to focus on a few goals at a high level, a few goals being right. a specific measurable things, and maybe two or three things for the for the entire year. Um, I was, uh, you know, talking with uh, one of our coaching clients and he had this big, long list of things he wanted to accomplish. And I asked him, I challenged him of the goals that you have on that list. What are the most 10 most important? And then he told me what they were. He didn't have to think about it. He was trying to come up with a lot of goals just to come up with a lot of goals. So what are the 10 most important things? Then he got it down to 10. I said, then I said, so what are the three most important things? And then he told me what the three were. Now he had to think about of the 10, mm-hmm. if he has to set aside seven and deprioritize them and choose only three, which will they be? And then he knew after he thought for a while what they'll be. And now he had a plan because those goals were very clearly definable and they had the most emotional reaction when he thought about them. If they were physical, they were family and the other was financial. Just being honest with you guys, I won't tell you what his goals were in case he's listening, which I know he is. But those those are the three categories that are the most important to him. And then we uh, drilled down. And again, I'll just make this up. This was one of his goals. But under the financial one, he had a really honorable goal, very specific goal of saving $250,000 next year. Right? So that goal, what we then did is we made an action plan around it. And do you mind if I talk about that? No, please. All right. So what we did is he already knew what his numbers were. He knew what he had to earn and go back and listen to the uh, previous podcast from this week. He knew what all of his drill down numbers were. So in other words, in order for him to accomplish his $250,000 savings, Considering he had to earn money to pay us, you know, all the other categories that were, again, laid out in the real estate treasure map, just text 2021 to 855 685 1045. We had to create a plan where he had to uh, essentially generate more revenue than he previously had. Obviously, he's trying to save 250000 um, more in dollars. But where, where the rubber met the road is we actually broke that down and figured out how many additional houses he had to list per year to accomplish that goal. Now, it was 250000 on top of the roughly 250000 he had to earn to pay for his personal and business and pay for his taxes, right? So he's now set the goal of having to earn $500,000. It was a little bit more than that, actually, but there it is. And so then what we did is we divided it by his average commission, which was about $12,500, and we figured out how many houses he had to sell. And so then when we broke it down, we then figured out, and we're getting to it, what his real estate magic number is, which is the number of listings he needs at all times to meet or exceed his goals. So again, drilling down more on this, and we'll get into more in detail. So if I'm firehosing you guys right now and you're feeling overwhelmed, just Bear with me, we'll get there. So his goal ultimately was to sell, I'm going to get the calculator out, was to earn $40,000 a month to meet or exceed his goals, right? Um, and he his average commission was 12500 500 So he has to sell three houses uh, per month in order to accomplish that goal. Now, realistically, he should probably sell like three and a half. You know, I know you can't sell a half a house, but you guys get the idea. So then the next question is, is where we're going for the treasure map, where where we want your focus to be is on the number of listings that he needs at all times to meet or exceed his goals. So we got into the MLS. Again, I'm getting ahead of Julie here, but you guys will understand here in the next few days. We got into the MLS and then we figured out what um, the average days in the market was in his MLS, what the absorption rate was. We figured all the analytical stuff, and then we ascertained basically how many listings he needs at all times. It was kind of a spitball guess. That's the best as you're ever going to get. But his magic number was seven because in his market, if he had seven listings at all times, it was safe to assume that he would sell an average of three per month. Three, you know, basically 3.2 per month, 3.5 per month. And that math equated to, given his average sale price, on average, $500,000 a year. So that was it. So he needs, his whole business plan, listeners, is to get his listing inventory up to and maintain at least seven units. Now, obviously, I then challenged him to get it up to 10 because who knows what will happen. One of the listings will decide to take it off the market, whatever, whatever. But at the end of the day, his whole business plan and mission in his real estate business is to get to and then replace as they sell uh, you know, the listings and maintain a minimum standard of 10 listings at all times. That's his entire business plan. Yes, but let me jump in here. You can't just declare that and assume that your numbers are right without having done what you first did. You walked him through the math. Right. What do you have to earn? It's exactly what we've been presenting. Mm-hmm. First, the first 250 is paying for his bills, his taxes, his family expenses, etc. The second 250 is the goal 250. 
got some taxes built in, et cetera. The third part of the math is you have to know your your average net commission to figure out these numbers, right? And then we had to know the statistics for the MLS to figure That's out what right. the absorption rate was for his yes. inventory, and right? You can't do this math really backwards. You, you have to know all these numbers in order to wind up at the magic number. The reason it's the magic number is because really that is all you have to focus on for you to accomplish the rest of the goal. So, so knowing, you and I have been doing this, Julie, for 25 years. Mm-hmm. And I know we sold real estate for a long time and then we started coaching pretty much by accident. But the reality of it is, is that we figured out this formula for ourselves when we sold yes. real estate when we were in our 20s, mm-hmm. right? Um, and no one told us this, but we figured it out because we knew ultimately that the most revenue, the most profit we could make was off the listing side. That's we right. could do basic math. And the math. buyer sides will come, right? You were just talking about him right. doing a half, an extra half deal. That'll spin off easily when you have inventory. Right. Well, my suggestion to him, and he was, you know, reveling in this idea, yep. was they actually not work with any buyers. Yeah. And that he not, so, so, but here's, here's the interesting concept. When, what does he do with the buyers? He pre-qualifies all the leads that he gets. He pulls out the buyers that present as buyers that actually have listings to sell. He then takes them as sellers. And then maybe he can choose to work with some of those sellers if he wants to, but he actually would be, be better. His time would be better spent, especially in a market like this, guys, and he's in a hot seller's market, if he focused all of his best energies every single day on being a listing agent. So then what happens, and we're getting to all of this, I'm foreshadowing what's coming. We create a schedule around making those number of contacts per day that's necessary for him to essentially meet or exceed his financial goals based on his magic number, which is 10 listings at all times. But here's what I want you to understand. It is really this simple. It does not have to be more complicated than this. We did not say anything about teams. You Do you think you need a big bunch of staff to have 10 listings at all times? No, you do not. Nope. We did not mention anything about fancy anything. No websites, no logos, no, no teams, no buyer's agents, no buying leads, no nothing, no videos, no social networking, no nothing. You don't have to do any of that stuff if you follow the, the very specific basic plan that we have. Now, you can. You can enhance what you're doing, but understand when you do the other stuff, the fluff, right? When you do that stuff, it has no nutritional value. In other words, you will not get from doing the fluff that you, you know, anything really for the most part. Your efforts are going to be uh, best rewarded by doing the real work of real estate, being a proactive lead generator and following our very easy to understand plan. Now, here's the thing that's fascinating to me. Agents, humans want things to be more complicated than what we just Mm -hmm. said. And I talked about this yesterday after you went to Premier. Yeah. But they really do. They want things to be more complicated. They do not want to hear. Julie Harris, mm-hmm. tell them right. that all I need is 10 listings at all times to meet or no, exceed my expectations. No, it has expect- to be way more complicated. No, no, no. You cannot tell me that, Julie. Mm-mm. No way. No. I'm not going to hear it. It has to be more complicated. <laughs> no, I know. Do not tell me that. Yeah. You, you, are you They'll telling me- to the death. I don't need a 14-step funnel that is you know predicated well, know. on a bunch of social networking ads. I know. You mean I don't need to start being a- An influencer. An influencer. An influencer is not a job. You don't, guys. That's the moral of the story. Not necessary. Not even needed. We have lots of very successful agents. I would say, in fact, the ones that have the best net are the ones that don't do all of that stuff. Right. Just really drill down. But I would would give them some other attributes. They're also very good at pricing. They're very good at doing what they don't want to do when they don't want to do it at a high level. Maybe not every single day, but they understand Extremely good at pre-qualifying. Very good at pre-qualifying. They don't work with a lot of fluff. Right. They make, by and large, more contacts than the average agent because they pre-qualify well. They're a little bit more picky, which means they've got to sift and sort a little bit more. But they don't have gajillions of leads. They're just good at, at turning them over, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Right. And so the, the goal for all of you should be to be impatient with the amount of time it takes for you uh, to learn how to be a listing agent. The goal should be that you are absolutely, uh, you know, essentially intolerant of anything uh, that's going to be offered to you that's not going to lead directly to you being put in a position to help people and make money. And one of the key filters that all of you should have in place, and this is one of the first rules that all you should have, because this is the time of year where you guys love, you get bored and you start looking for silly things to preoccupy your time. Next thing you know, you're on a Facebook group and someone's on there trying to tell you about some gimmick. So here's the best filter for whatever gimmicks you might be considering. Will this gimmick idea, fill in the blank, put money in my pocket in the, and then next 90 days or less. For sure. Not For sure. estimating, yes. not impressions or contacts or anything Or else. brand building or down the no. road or maybe over time. No, because what you'll discover is 99% of all the things that are being sold to you guys will not put the money in. Now, is there a place for the branding and the social networking? There is, but you are doing it in the wrong order. You're, again, Julie just made this point. I'm going to restate it. Bear with me. 
you might not ever choose to do any of the other fluff stuff because you don't need to because you've learned to be a proactive lead generator and you're making consistent income and you don't need to have all that other stuff. Now, if you choose to do the other things, understand that they are fluff. It will not lead directly to business. It might just be a creative endeavor for you and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But please don't be confused that the real revenue, the real income, the real profit is going to come from doing the real work in real estate. And the spokes you have to add first, which we're getting to that analogy, Mm -hmm. the spokes you have to add first to your lead generation wheel are the proactive lead generation spokes. And after you've gotten good at the proactive lead generation spokes, I bet you, you will not even remotely be romanced by the idea of doing any of the passive stuff. That's right. So make sure you do your math correctly and figure out what your magic number is. And by the way, those of you who are new or newer, maybe less experienced, you don't have to wait to be a listing agent. I had a great uh, caller on my premier coaching call yesterday. He said he's only a year into real estate. This is the end of his first year. He did eight deals and six of them were listings. I thought that was awesome and a great example. You can start out with listings and you should. So anybody telling you you've got to wait and you've got to do your time and you have to eat off of bigger agents' crumbs, don't listen to that person. Be part of a team. Be a buyer no, no, agent. No, no. no you, you don't have to do, do any of that. that. Just yeah. jump right in and be a listing agent right away. And if you're an agent who basically is essentially, you know, being pulled in a different, in many different directions, not really having defined lead generation sources, your only real lead generation source of press would you'd say centers of influence and past clients. And if I were to ask you, how are you uh, getting those people to call you? You would say, well, I mail them things. I drop off things. And I... So in other words, you're doing passive stuff. And the problem with that, that obviously is that you can't control it. You can't make a, a, you can't create a plan where every single day you're going to wake up and you're going to do X and it's going to equal Y. And Y is helping somebody and making money. I mean, you can't do that with the centers of influence and past client plans. You can't. You have to wait around for them to call back and ask you to help them. Well, and you can't predict. We're not saying you shouldn't do it. This should be kind of the underlying foundation to other things. The, the issue is that you can't tell me who from your database, your past clients, your centers of influence, who's going to be next. What, what their motivation is going to be, if they're buying or selling with you, if they're talking to other people or not, you don't know. So you've got to keep that moving all the time and not make it your only spoke in the wheel. So before we get to the spokes in the wheel, because the next question is, you know, once I figure out my magic number and I know how many deals I got to do per month to, again, not just keep the lights on, but also to meet or exceed your actual goals. The next question logically is, well, how am I going to get there? What, what am I going to do? Well, let's introduce the concept and then we can help yeah. them build it, okay? Yep. Um, because you and I both have uh, Zoom meetings. Thing. Right. Yeah. So the spokes and the wheel analogy, it's very simple. Julie and I came up with this, I don't even know, decades ago. But it's a very simple concept is that essentially your spokes, I want you to imagine an old time bicycle wheel. The more spokes in the wheel, the stronger the wheel is going to be. So again, you're rolling down the street and your front wheel has one spoke. And that one spoke is, you know, all that's holding up the integrity of that wheel. That one spoke, all that's there to basically keep that wheel from uh, folding in on itself. And guess what happens? You hit the smallest of pebbles, the wheel collapses and you come tumbling down. And that's really a problem that we see mostly with agents who are 100% dependent on passive lead generation. Yeah. Right? So this is the, the founding philosophy. And I'm giving you a real life example. Now, the example I'm about to give you is actually from, um, you know, I'm trying to think how to present this without embarrassing the agent, to be honest with you. I'm going to sort of make this up, but I'm going to use renditions of the truth because I know this person's a listener and I know, and I know she'll know I'm talking about her and she'll be very mad at me if I disclose this. Well, so there was an agent um, that, uh, let's call her Beth, okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so Beth was a ardent uh, passive lead generator. This social networking and all the rest of that stuff. And all of a sudden, basically, long story short, she was... Um, in. Actually, I framed that wrong, to be honest with you. I framed it wrong. She was actually a prospector. She was an over the phone prospector. I was getting the story, I was getting the people I, confused I, in my head. So she, so she was a pro, she, and she would make her number of calls every single day. And she would do that every single day. And then she got laryngitis. And then because her only source of business was picking up the phone and making phone calls, which is definitely the first thing all of you need to learn how to do, 
then uh, when she lost her voice, she couldn't do it. Now, the doctor told her that, I mean, she didn't completely lose her voice. It was just scratchy. The doctor told her to stop talking, told her to stop making the calls. She didn't listen to the doctor. And over time, she completely lost her voice. And I she, believe it became mono at some point, didn't it? it I think like it started out that way. You yeah, remember this too. I do. Yeah, this was from a few years ago. Yeah. So she then um, said you know, she lost her voice for a long period of time too because she really didn't listen to her doctor because she only had that one source of business. Now, the one source of business she had, I want to really make this very clear. It was an excellent source of business. And she was fantastic at uh, proactively generating leads, uh, picking up the phone. But it was her only source of business. Isn't that interesting? So then what she had to learn were other ways of generating business that weren't solely dependent on her um, her voice, frankly, and her ability to pick up the phone. Now, she had come to us um, after she'd gone through this whole ordeal, explained that she'd been reading and listening to us for years, and then said, Tim, I need to start learning other ways of generating business other than prospecting. And that was great. And so she was ready for additional spokes on her wheel. So her original spoke and her only spoke and the only spoke she ever actually created, if I remember correctly, was only chasing um, for sale by owners. And that's all she'd really learned how to do. But man, she was good at it. So if, if that were taken away, what other sources of uh, business did she have? What other spokes did she have? She had nothing. And so we went back and we helped her create centers of influence plans. We helped her to create other things that would not be as reliable or frankly as dependable at creating business. But we put three or four spokes in place that would supplement her main effort, which was the centers of influence. I'm sorry, which was picking up the phone and calling the for sale by owners. And that was a turning point for her. Her volume, her units then went up by 20 or 30 percent. So well, what, because multiple spokes in the wheel makes a lot stronger wheel, right? That's right. So here's the whole point of the spokes in the wheel. Each there, source it, of yeah. business je- it represents a spoke in the wheel. Yes, and ideally, each spoke should be able to create the units that you need per month. But here's the issue: you know, past client center of influence are not always biting if you were, um, you know, fishing for them. So maybe today isn't going to be a day that one of them calls you back, but assuming that you know how to prospect for sale by owners and you've been doing your follow-up with them, maybe that's who lists today. And if that's not going to list with you today because you're good at probate, that's going to work out. So it's basically, it's more than covering your bases. It's developing, um, you know, multiple ways of doing the same goal so that you're always covered. And in the day and age right now, where everybody's trying to sell them the one magic spoke, right? If you just do this, this is going to rain leads upon you. It's easy to believe that you can be a one spoke wonder. And the spokes that Julie and I, or lead sources that Julie and I teach you guys to do first are the ones that can't be taken away. I mean, you know, assuming you don't lose your voice, (laughs) right? They'll always be probate. They'll always be expired. They'll always be for sale by owners. They'll always be notice of defaults. They'll always be the, you know, 16 other sources of business we teach you to chase. And all those sources of business will always be there. Unlike what a lot of you guys are doing is investing yourselves too much in social platforms where you're assuming that what will work sort of kind of today will work sort of kind of tomorrow. And it doesn't. And you see all these changes that happen constantly with the different ways that the, uh, you know, the social, the technology companies change their algorithms, change the way I mean, we do a fair amount of social networking for our coaching business, right? Nothing really elaborate and we're not spending any money on it. But I've seen how, for example, if you guys, like Julie and I were Facebook customer number one, you know, we have an, like an ancient URL. We, we got Tim and Julie Harris.com back in 96 and we were on you know Twitter in the early days and the whole thing. But what I've seen over, over time is those things did work originally. Like I remember when Realtor.com, when Julie and I were selling real estate, when that came online, and those of you guys are nerds, you'll appreciate what I'm about to tell you. You could actually write your housing description for Realtor.com, load the pictures, you took a listing, then wrote the description, and then you could do link. You could link out of the description. So in other words, a buyer could then be perusing your house for sale listing, and then you could have a call to action in your description, and then basically link them back to your website, and you wouldn't have to pay for that. <laughs> you it guys was awesome while it lasted. You understand because what I'm your, saying? Your point is right. while it lasted. Right. And I remember also mm-hmm. when Google... Google pay per click came online, mm-hmm. and again, this was you know forever ago. But it was over. Actually, it was this time of year, and I remember very specifically having somebody who was in the tech industry tell me pay per click, and you guys ought to be doing it. Mm-hmm. And then you and I did it, and I remember Google pay per click was unbelievably powerful yeah. at generating. You know, and I quickly figured out how to use you know direct response to basically mm-hmm. get seller and buyer leads, and it was amazing. 
But what happened is all those things changed. They changed really, really fast. And if all I had done was if my only source of business was relying on those types of things, those again predicated on the tech gods deciding to allow my ideas to work, I would be at it. We would never would have lasted in the business. We, But Julie and I started out our first year and every year since. We knew that we had to be proactively generators. And we did test and sample some of those other things. But what's happened is time's marched on. And many of you are listening to people who never learned how to proactively generate, lead generate. They've only knew. They've only come up in the era of buying business, and the buying business um, essentially that mega trend started when Julie and I were selling real estate. That's what I'm describing to you. So these things originally really work. Now, some of those of you who've been in the internet marketing, you know, let's say you've been testing Facebook ads. Do you remember when Facebook ads worked and they were really really cheap, like five six years ago? And now what happened? It doesn't work anymore. And so there's this constant um, evolution. Uh, or degradation of these ideas as they start out they work and now it, you can't build a business like that you're always going to be chasing the trend you're never going to have consistent lead flow if you're constantly bouncing from one platform to another one platform to another you've not really built anything for yourself you've not improved your skill set you've not become the person that you are destined to become if you're willing to do what you don't want to do and you don't want to do at the highest level who can wake up every single day and say today I'm going to set at least one pre-qualified listing appointment I know what to say know how to say it. I know what to do. That's where you have to get. When you're doing all these other things, including centers of influence and past client stuff, you're just basically hoping that the real estate gods decide to yeah. sprinkle leads on you that particular day. And there's something in marketing, and I think this, the word is a, it's a bit of an onomatopoeia, isn't it? Over, okay. Oversaturation. Yeah. Yeah. That's a definite onomatopoeia. So oversaturation is in essence where you have too many people doing the same thing and the idea stops to work. In other words, it's oversaturated. It's like a sponge that can't well, hold water the anymore. Well, that often is that that starts to happen far before you see it or notice right. it happening. And you can be months into that expenditure and go, huh, I wonder what, why isn't that working anymore? But that happens with ev that happens with all these ideas. It even happens with the old school ones like direct mail. So you, it becomes oversaturated. You could have a phenomenal. We've had coaching clients who so we've helped set up really great direct mail campaigns. But before we do, we research the snot out of the area that they want to actually start direct mailing. And if we find out, for example, that the market's uh, essentially the turnover's too slow, and if we, I'll tell you what we primarily look for. If we see well entrenched one, two, and three agents in those particular markets who are doing direct mail, you really think direct mail that you're going to do is somehow going to grab the attention that those agents haven't already seized? That market's oversaturated. And so the same thing happens with all these other gimmicky ideas. But where it never happens is with your skill set. Which means your best affirmation is, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. Instead of, if it's meant to be, I'm dependent on all these other things actually coming into alignment and working. Right. That's not a plan. That's and do, opium. And doing, following these uh, sort of you know gimmicky paths that are so, I don't know, sexy and they're so captivating and the idea that you can tempting. just do, tempting, right? The, the problem ultimately with that is you really don't ever develop a specific marketable skill set. You don't ever get to the point where, again, you have that confidence and the ability and the business acumen and the professionalism to actually have a predictable, duplicatable business. Do you remember when Julie and I were just talking um, about the real estate magic number? Remember when we were just describing to you that formula? You remember what it was predicated on? You actually making a certain number of proactive contacts every single day to get your listing inventory up to a certain number. But you cannot do any of the things I just said. Those two simple activities if you're basically buying your business and you're just essentially hoping for the real estate gods to you know, sprinkle a uh, lead on you that particular day. You can only do it if you have the skill set to go after the business. Does this make sense? That's right. So get your skills in order. Get the treasure map. Get to work. Yeah, exactly. None of, none of this is particularly difficult or super advanced or anything like that. None of it requires that you sell X number of houses or you can't handle the treasure map. None of that is true. Mm -mm. Every single listener can do this. And the faster you do it and the faster you get these concepts and put them into place the happier you're going to be, and you're going to have a lot more money in your pocket. The hardest part of listening to what we have to say is not – it's easy to understand. Sure. It's intuitive. Yeah. I think the hardest part of listening to what you and I have to say is then knowing you have to say no 
to all the other things that maybe they've right. been tuned into, right? Yeah, because and, they are tempting and they are sexy and, you know, I mean, who, right. who wouldn't want to take an easy button, right? And, and you might not even find anybody else out there and they, you know, anywhere that it's going to reinforce what Julie and I are saying. And the reason is, is because they haven't been in the business for as long as we have. Exactly that. They haven't. I mean, there's right. a benefit of having done something well, for as long I mean, as we I, have. And seeing all of those, I mean, there are so many things on that list of I mean, I remember when, when you could get direct leads off of your website because it wasn't being pushed down to page 20 by yeah. all these other companies. SEO right? was easy. It was easy for a while. When, we put, up, when we put up our real estate website, timandjulieharris.com, right? Yeah. We had, um, from that website, we were able to get, just with virtually no, uh, certainly expertise with regards to search engine optimization. And I'm telling you guys all that, this. That term wasn't even around then. No. But I, like. you could easily get to be one of the first top five uh, page placements. And, and then you could do pay-per-click at the top of every search, you know, on Google. Get, you guys remember all the search engines there used to be? Do you remember all these yeah. stupid names? Bing and, I mean, even AOL. And Yahoo and AOL. Yeah. But there were a whole bunch of other ones, yeah. too. Like it goofy names. Google like the Remember name. the one with the little dog logo? What the hell was that? I, no, I, know. I know. But they've all gone. But it was easy back then. And all that stuff worked because they were new ideas. But those days are over. That essentially the, the ship has long since sailed. And that it, happens all the time now. It does. Yeah. I mean, really quick. You look. They're talking now about breaking up Facebook. They're I talking about. That. They're talking about making Facebook uh, diversify out of Instagram and out of Snapchat. And they're gonna. Who, who knows what's gonna happen with all that? But the moral of the story, listeners, is is if you have the skill set to be a proactive lead generator, you'll never be dependent on any of these other sources. You'll have libertas, which means freedom. You'll have that freedom if you've actually earned the right to have it. And that only comes on the other side of doing having long periods of doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level. Anything else you want to say to these guys? Yeah, but, you know, those periods won't be as long when you do the right things at the right time. And you don't go through your real estate career guessing at what you're supposed to do. That's the whole point of the treasure map is to get you away from saying, well, I just want to do more. I want to do more next year. Right. I want to save more. I want to have more. Okay, so that's not definitive. That's not specific, measurable, time dependent, any of, the, of that. So the more you define it, and I'll tell you, even though temporarily in the treasure map, they can get a little bit stressed out over the financial thing because you're having to be real honest with your situation. When you actually finish the treasure map and you have the answers to all of these questions, like what's your magic number? How many units do you actually need? And how are you going to get there? The enormous sigh of relief that everyone has. Every Definitely. single time. You've done tons of treasure maps with people. I have. They're like, oh, okay. So now, okay, all I've got to do is this. Well, they send us pictures. Yeah. Like the, awesome. out, the output of the treasure map is you're going to end up having dry erase boards on your office wall. And one of your dry erase boards is going to have the number of listings that you – or the number of transactions you have to do to essentially accomplish your goals. The other board's going to have the number of listings you need at all times. You're going to set your life up so that you have – when you walk into your office – and no, we do not want this to be done virtually. We want dry erase boards, right? That's we, the point of it. It's that's, called visual accountability. Right. And that's where we're taking all of you guys is setting up your office and your business and your personal life so that you actually can walk into this space. I'm Julie and I are in our little podcasting studio, which is, I don't even know what the square footage of this room is, maybe 400 square feet, but we're surrounded by dry erase boards. We're surrounded by things that are conducive to us drilling down, staying focused and doing the best job we can as these guys as real estate coach. Mm -hmm. So listen, we're going to pick up on this topic on Monday. On Sunday, (laughs) Mrs. Harris has warned me that she's got a lot of interesting topics. Our Sunday show is the unhinged usually not about real estate shows so make sure you're listening it's where we have a lot of fun we've talked about all sorts of crazy topics um over the past year i think uh, you know 2020 has certainly brought up a lot of uh, interesting opportunities to talk about everything from what would it be uh killer what was it? killer hornets uh, murder hornets murder aliens hornets, aliens um all kind of, we've got the uh, the alignment of planets is actually happening. Oh, yes. Soon. That's right. So, the alignment yes. of planets. We have all kinds of fun things to talk about. Mm-hmm. Yes. And we didn't talk about COVID a lot because everyone was talking about COVID. Um, but we talked about things to entertain you guys because really you need to allow your brain to be a little bit more elastic. And one of the best ways to do it is start thinking about things or reading about things that are going to be completely foreign to you. And that's what Julie and I look for. We'll, we, I'll stumble across something or Julie and I will stumble ac- or she'll stumble across something and we'll send, you know email it and then we'll read it and then it'll be something we can talk about. And we look for things that we don't normally talk about. You know, we don't... On we, purpose. On purpose, right. And you we, guys should too. You know, it's it's funny because just to make it practical, maybe you're going to be on a listing appointment and you see in somebody's office something about, I don't know, it could be choose your topic, aliens or a certain collectible or a certain type of art. And if you know just a little bit more about that than you did because you have some curiosity, 
I mean, it, actually, that's one of the things that, that they say made Leonardo um, da Vinci, like, really a great thinker is that he had this great curiosity about everything in life. And it all starts to come together. And then you can say, wow, I noticed, you know, your art by so-and-so. And now, I mean, at that point, you have the listing because you know a little something about other than, you know, your tiny little microscopic real estate world. That's right. And it's good for you. It is. And it's fun. So that's what Sunday's all about. And uh, Julie's supposedly got a lot of really crazy content for Sunday. Still so, collecting. So make sure, been guys, make sure you guys listen. In the meantime, thank you for continuing to make this the number one listen to daily podcast for real estate agents in the United States. Please do continue to share the podcast with other agents. We sincerely appreciate it. And thank you for continuing to make Harris Rules a bestseller. Um, over 400 five-star reviews on Amazon. It's available everywhere. We saw it in bookstores and we were traveling recently. Um, but really, the easiest place to get it is on Amazon. So just download it. It is already comes pre-wrapped in a very festive shade of holiday green, right? That's the cover is uh, teal. So make sure you get the book. And even if um, it's also available on Audible, it's a great book for entrepreneurs. We have a lot of people that are reading it that aren't even in the industry, real estate industry, but they're getting something from it for the sake of the business advice. So do I, I, I strongly suggest all of you get the book and listen to it and read it. It works out perfectly if you read the book while you're doing the treasure map. Because once you start essentially breathing the same mental air that Julie and I are breathing and all of our thousands of coaching clients, what you're going to discover is your life actually becomes a lot simpler, easier, clearer. You're going to focus on fewer things, and those things that you focus on are going to be the things that are most important that are going to move you up down the road the fastest with the least amount of stress. That's our job. Our job as a coach is to make it so that you guys can transcend uh, faster with fewer headaches, and you can essentially accomplish more with your life. And that's what we hope to continue to do for all of you. Thank you for making this number one listen to daily podcast. You guys have a fantastic day. We'll talk with you on the show on Sunday. Make sure you listen. This program has been a presentation by Tim and Julie Harris, Real Estate Coaching. For more information on our real estate coaching and training programs, visit our website at timandjulieharris.com. Remember to tune in weekdays at noon for upcoming shows. And until next time, thank you for listening to Real Estate Coaching Radio with Tim and Julie Harris. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.